Um, I, so real quick, I remember I had a class in college. There were three students in the class. It was like an upper level math course, believe it or not. One day, the other two people in there decided to not come to class. They decided not to come. So I was in the class alone, and the instructor was walking around, looking all over the classroom as if I'm like, it's just me, dude. You just talk right to me. But uh, so I got forward. That's awesome. You guys have any questions or anything? Which you should be. Um, the last test went up to chapter seven. So even if you haven't finished the homework for chapter seven, um, you really should be starting to look at chapter eight stuff. Uh, now chapter seven stuff does lead into chapter eight. So it is a little important to go back and finish chapter seven homework if you haven't, uh, but you need to get into chapter eight. So what we've done so far in chapter eight is explain where the idea of the plus or minus 4% comes from. So when you see a poll, when you see like, uh, we took a survey and we found that 80% of people um, like, um, I don't know, Disney Plus. 80% of them, right? <laughs> Somewhere they're gonna say plus or minus like 4% or something. So I still haven't shown you where that number comes from. We haven't, today we're gonna to talk about percentages. So far we've only talked about means, okay. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, anytime I lecture, I try to break the lecture up into a couple parts. There's the concepts part, and then there's a the nuts and bolts part. And I know as students, you're very interested in the nuts and bolts, just what the hell am I gonna to have to be able to do, right? What is a problem gonna look like? Um, let me try to talk a little bit about the concept again real quick. Um, all right, say there's a population somewhere. Um, yeah, let's say um, the, let's talk about like the population of, of um, reservoirs of water across the US that go to homes, you with me? And there's like an average, there's an average, um, what am I saying? There's an average like number of um, uh, particulates in the water, right? Like number of um, the parts per million. So let's say you have water, you can have so many parts per million of the water be, um, what's a good example? Some kind of chemical, there's some kind of chemical that's just kind of present in water. So there's a certain average that's okay. I wanna know what the actual average is in this little community. Maybe there's a community where they're having more cases of cancer or something, right? So I go to this community and I, and I know, when I go to the community, I know that there is an average amount of this chemical, there is. Everybody with me? Like if I go to a building, I know there is an average age of everybody in that building. I know it exists, don't I? Yes? I, I haven't calculated it yet, but if you walk into a building, do you all agree with me that there is an average age of everybody in the building? Okay. So if I go to this town, I go to some town uh, that's having a lot of cancer, and I, I know there's an average amount of that chemical in the, in the water. I know it. I just don't know what it is because I haven't. I'd have to sample all the freaking water, correct? Uh, in fact, I said sample, but I'd have to test it all to figure out what is it. So what do I do instead? I take samples. This is what you see in movies. Scientists go in and they take a sample. They take a core sample. They take all these samples. Yes. What does that say? That's a population. Uh, chemical. Sorry. Chemical. So there's a the population of the uh, reservoirs of water, right? And I know that there's this certain chemical that could be present. And we all, you all know that any food you eat, any water you drink, there's little tiny trace amounts of this, of something. It could be something really bad, but it's only bad if you get so much of it. Everybody with me? There's no way to make it go to zero. So we just figured out, okay, if there's this much, then it's okay. If there's this much, uh, it could be a problem. 
So I know in this town there was some cases of cancer. And I go in, and I'm thinking, okay, let's check the water. Because there's this factory nearby. I want to see if they're disposing of things properly, right? We go take a sample. And I want this to really make sense, what I just did. Uh, if we go take a sample, we go to this water, we take a little sample of the water, we take a little sample of the water from all these different places. Will that sample mean be the same as the actual population mean? Hell no. Of course not, right? Because the sample's going to have variability. Just like if I go take a sample of gross among students, I'm not going to get the entire age of all the gross among students. It's, but it should be close. So when we construct a confidence interval, we're trying to do a better job of giving an estimate of what the real mean is. So if I make a 95% confidence interval, how do I make that interval? I go to the town, I take samples of water, and then I construct the confidence interval using this. So I take a certain sample size, right? I go to a certain number of places, get a certain number of samples, uh, I, I decide on my confidence level, right? And then I make the confidence interval. So this is us. We go do this. We do this, yes? Could another group of people go in and do the same analysis? Let's say another group comes in after us. Couldn't they do their own analysis, right? Will their sample mean be the same as ours was? I would put money on it. Could it be? Yeah. yeah. How likely is it? Not very. Everybody with me? So their sample mean could be somewhere. This exists. This is just a fact. We don't know what the shit it is, though. Do you right now know what the average age of everybody on Gross One Campus right now is? <laughs> Hell no. How could we get a feel for what it is? Take a sample, right? Will that sample be that sample mean? Will it be the real average age? Oh, hell no. I'm going to put a ton of money on it, and I'm a teacher, right? Money. You with me? So what do we do to kind of improve on our admittedly wrong sample mean? We build a confidence interval. So if another group came along, they might get a sample mean down here. And so when they construct their confidence interval, it doesn't actually contain the real mean. So couldn't you imagine a hundred groups, couldn't a hundred different groups come to this town and they all take their own samples? Yes? What a 95% confidence interval means is when all of them make their own intervals, 95% of them will actually capture the real mean. That's what that means. We're actually going to do a thing today in class uh, that normally works better when there's more people, but, you know, I appreciate the six of you being here. Um, we're still going to try to do it. Um, okay. Let's do a, a concrete example. In fact, let me give you this. Make this a little bit easier. Part of this is the layer. There we go. Calculator, let's do that right now. So anybody needs a calculator? Anyone? Okay. Well, I'm getting a whole wallet. 
A with you, and then I want you guys to do part B. Did everybody see that? I'm joking. Hold on. Right, let me turn off one of these lights here. So you need your uh, Z score chart, and you need a calculator. Again, I really want this to make sense. Obviously, I always want everything I say to make sense. When we go take a sample mean, you guys know, first day, you knew the sample mean wasn't going to be the real average. You knew it. Come in and you know that's true. What confidence intervals do is they try to improve on that admittedly wrong estimate. It still should be a good estimate. If I go take a sample of 80 uh, Grossman students, their average age should be close to the real average age. Do you guys agree? Is there a chance it could be far away? Of course. I could just randomly pick really young people or really old people. But if I take a good random sample, it should be close to the real average. So if I just take the, the average I get and I go up and down so much, then I can say more, I can communicate more to people. If I find an average and I get a confidence interval of 10 years to 70 years, is that a good confidence interval? Most likely, I didn't take a big enough sample. So if I take a bigger sample and I get uh, 20 to 30, that's much better. That's better than 10 to 70, of course, right? That's still not very good. I take a bigger sample and I get 23 to 28. Now we're talking. Now that's a decent estimate. Okay, maybe. Okay. So help me out here, guys. Read through this. We are looking at some Daltons. So maybe, just to kind of give this a little context, maybe off the coast, we're noticing um, some runoff. We always do, right? And we're concerned what that's doing to the dolphins off the coast. Are they growing the way they normally do? Like either are they stunted or maybe they are starting to grow huge, right? They're, you with me? Sort of like monster dolphin, the next uh, Sharknado, right? Um, so we're gonna go take a sample to see what it looks like their lengths are. I can't possibly look at every freaking dolphin. So of course I take a sample. So can somebody help me out reading through that? Can anybody identify what this is? 92.6. Yeah, what does this symbol mean? Sample, size. sample mean. mean, 11. So the sample mean, so they took a sample and they find that. 92.6, right? Yeah. What does this symbol mean? Population standard deviation. Yeah, and what's, this, what's the symbol for a sample standard deviation? Anybody remember? Oh, I'm sorry. Everybody at home should be here, but that's all right. Um, so the, the, anybody remember that Greek letter is for? This is the Greek letter what? Do you guys remember? Anybody, anybody remember the name of this? It's not mu. Mu is the, is the mean. This is the Greek letter S. This is sigma, right? So population standard deviation is sigma. Sample standard deviation is S. So you kind of see in, in a few situations, Greek letters mean population. Our letters mean sample, right? You guys semi with that? Sort of like when the Super Bowl happens. They very often will use Roman numerals, yes? To make a seaboard. Oh, oh. So we use Greek to mean population, and then we use our letters to mean sample. So that is the population standard deviation, and of course that is... 
Can somebody else tell me what is N? The percentage? No. What does N mean? Sample size. Sample size. And what is it? 37. 37. Three times. So can you guys identify real quick? Here's the formula. What's the only thing in the formula that I don't currently know? Z. Now I put this question here because this is really important. Can, can anybody, so how, I'm, how am I gonna figure out what the z-score, let me ask you that. And then we'll go back to this. How am I gonna find the z-score? How confident do I wanna be? 95% 95. 95 confidence. So there'll only be a 5% chance that the interval we make won't have the real mean in it. And that for me is good. If there's a 5% chance I'm wrong, I'm like, that's pretty good. But maybe. So how far up and down do I want to go? Well, I want to go far enough to catch how much? 95%. 95%. You guys remember the shortcut to find that z-score? You need a z-score chart. I've got a couple. So you could either, let's do it both ways. What percentage is in here? Right, because there's 95% in, there must be 5% out. So there's 2.5%, 0.025. So if I look up 0.025, that is an area. Areas are in here, 0.025. Bam, I see 1.9. Six, right? That's negative 1.96, so what's this one? Beautiful, because of symmetry, right? It's symmetric around the middle. Now there's a shortcut way to do this. If you, if you go to the positive side, and you look here at the little, what they call the baby chart, we want to be 95% confident, right? Sure enough, that's 1.96. Focus a little bit. That's better. I want to be 95% confident, 1.96. So if I wanted to be 99% confident, Z would be 2.575. So cool. And again, that all the Z score tells you is how far from the middle you get. And of course, that makes if I want to be more confident, I want to go further from the middle. So of course my Z score is going to get bigger. So I go further out, I catch more shit. So we got 1.96. Why don't I put negative 1.96? Because the plus or minus is built in. So I go up and down. Now, can anyone tell me, real quick, how did I? How did we just find 1.96? What did we use? What did we use to find this? I know it's a silly question. What did we just use? Z-score chart. What's got to be true? before I can use the z-score chart. What's gotta be true about the distribution? Look at the top of the page. What shape does it show? On the z-score chart, what shape is up the top? The shape on the top. The yeah, 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 what is it? Yeah, the, the shape where he's working with right there. Totally, what, what shape is this? Uh, or what's this called? Uh, <laughs> normal distribution. Yeah, normal distribution. Okay. Okay, let me stop for a minute. I really want this just to make total sense. The only way I can find the z-score is to use that chart. Why is it okay to use that z-score chart here? Why? Well, it's gotta be true, it's gotta be normal. Can anyone see there's one number up here that guarantees that the means will be normally distributed? Does anyone, does anyone see that? What's the magic number? N has to be greater than? No. Nope. Tripping a little bit. 30. 30. Yeah. Does anyone remember that? That's the whole thing from chapter 7. Once you get a sample bigger than 30, then the means will become normal enough. And what is N for us? 37. Yeah. So right here, N equals 37 greater than 30. Now, the other thing on this problem, by the way, uh, I can't remember why I did this. 
But do you see how in the in the sentence I actually say dolphin lengths are known to be normally distributed? I didn't need to say that because the sample size is big enough to save us if it wasn't normal, right? So if you don't know what the distribution looks like and you want to use z-scores, you have to show me that it's normally distributed because the only time the z-score chart works is if you have a normal distribution. Because that freaking z-score chart tells you all the areas everywhere in the picture. So doesn't the picture have to be very specific before I can know all the areas? Could it be like blah, 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 blah? No, then I wouldn't know shit. So if I know it's very specifically normal, then that's why all that makes sense. That's why I know exactly what area is where. All right. So let's see. Can you guys please, we know everything we need to know now. Can you take a minute and try to figure this out? And remember I told you to first do this part. This part is called the error. I would first calculate this. So try to throw that in your calculator and then I'll come in afterwards and catch up to you. So again, just to remind you, I said calculate this first and then you would add it to this and subtract it from this. Catch up to you guys. Did anybody get the error? This piece? All right, let me catch up to you. So you said 1.3 something? Yeah, so it's 92.6, give or take 1.324. Now you just have to do 92.6 minus 1.324 and 92.6 plus 1.324. So it's from 91.276 up to 93.924. So really quick, if, if we knew that the average dolphin length for the entire western coast was uh, 97 inches, right? You guys with me? So we just know from previous research that the average length of uh, dolphins along the entire coast is 97 inches. Does our analysis show there's a problem here? What does it look like our dolphin's average length 
is. From this to this, right? And if we know the average length for dolphins along the whole coast is 97 inches, is this evidence that something is messing with the dolphins' ability to grow? What do you guys say? Yeah, because 97 is not in here. We are 95% confident that this interval has the real mean for dolphins off our coast. Now, this, is this evidence that the runoff is causing the problem? Not yet. We did nothing to look at that, but we know from this analysis, we have evidence that the average length is shorter. Now we can start to look at some other analysis to see what's causing that. You guys all know after a rainstorm, you don't go to certain beaches. You guys know this? You know what I'm talking about. So there's a runoff. Do you think that runoff could affect species living off the coast? Yes, right? So if there's dolphins that live off the coast that doesn't have runoff, and we do this analysis for us, and we're like, oh shit, they're shorter than the other dolphins somewhere else. That's an issue, isn't it? That, that says something's going on, right? Is it possible that shorter dolphins just like it down here in San Diego? <laughs> Is that possible? Yeah. But what's more likely is something's causing them to not grow as much as they're supposed to. You guys with me? This is, a, this is like basically what's done. This is basically what's done in the real world. Right? In a minute, I'm going to have you guys do some work, and I'm going to look up a study and show you where you'll see exactly this stuff in an actual study. Um, so let's first off. I need you to help me write this. Because I forget. What the hell? So, conclusion. We are farmers. No, we are 95% confident. I love it. We are 95% confident that what? Yeah, the interval. 91.276 inches to 93.924 inches contains what? The true. The true mean length of dolphins. Holy crap. I made L and T in a single letter. Okay. Now, I kind of added on the thing about they're off the our coast. I just wanted to put it in context of something in the real world. Okay, so what I want you guys to do, I want you to realize this. Most of the work for this is already done. I want you to do part B. It's all the same stuff. It's the same problem, correct? Can anyone say what, what's going to change? Z is going to change. All right, so go ahead and try to do part B. And I'm going to look up a study for us. Can you do the recursion? Let's see.
There we go. There we go. Okay. Let me catch up to you guys with John Okay. So part B, X bar is still 92.6. It's still the same study. 4.11, 37. So you should know ahead of time, will this 90% confidence interval be larger or smaller than the 95% confidence interval? You've already done the work. You can tell. That's Smaller because 95 catches 95% of the information, 90% only catches 90% of the information. It'll be a little bit smaller. I don't have to catch as much stuff if I want to be less confident. Did anybody discover what the z score is? Uh, 1.645. Yeah, so again, you can just use a little baby chart on the positive z score side. And I just got to throw this formula together. Get that far setting up the formula. Everybody cool with the 1645? Okay. So now if I do this, uh, 1.645 times 4.11 divided by square root of 37, I get 1.111. Minus 1.111 and 92.6 plus 1.111. So now my interval is 91.489 up to 93.711. And just to make sure you guys really understand this, do you see how this number does not go down as far as this one did? Doesn't go down as far? And this number does not go up as far as this one did. So this interval is definitely bigger than that one. So then you would just say we are 90% confident that the interval, 91.49 inches to 93.711 inches contains the true mean dolphin length. You don't have to say exactly those words, but you have to capture that idea. All right, so before we move on to part C, because we have to prove that formula I've got there, I want to take a minute and show you a few studies. Um, to just show you the work we're doing right now is exactly what's done in official scientific analysis and published in journals, right? So I'll give you a minute to copy all that down. If you can read that, by the way, that's pretty good. Right? I'm sorry, I write so horribly. But... Okay, you guys know. I misspelled dolphin, so I'm sorry. I caught a bunch of dolphins. Sure about it. Okay, so real quick, I found several studies. Um, here's one. Unfortunately, I'm very sorry. It talks about COVID-19, but they analyze a claim by some anti-vaxxers that COVID-19 causes this what's called venous thromboembolism. 
did not sound fun. Uh, but what they discover, we'll, we'll talk about what they discover in a minute, but can you guys see there right here? See on a confidence interval, 1.3752 to 1.3758. Look at that interval, is that very wide? Is that interval, would you say it's really wide? 1.3752 to 1.37, holy shit. They are freaking confident as hell. Now of course, what's their end? Look at these ends. 800 something thousand, 300 something thousand. You guys, you guys with me? Does it make sense that the bigger the sample I take, the smaller my error should be, the more confident I am in what I find? So the bigger the sample I take, the smaller our confidence is almost gonna get. Okay. So there's one example. And by the way, the results were, um, there is a trivial increased risk if you take the vaccine. But what I find interesting is there is a much higher risk of getting this venous thromboid, thromboid embolism if you get COVID, right? So there's a lot of talk about um, myocardial infarctions, whatever, the, the heart trouble that young men were experiencing from the vaccine. So there is clinical studies showing that there is a very small increased risk. But if you get COVID, the risk is much higher. You guys understand what I'm saying? And then, by the way, I don't, if, if you're, um, if you don't want, if you didn't get the vaccine, whatever, right? This is not talking about policy. This is just talking about freaking data. That's all this is talking about, right? Okay, so I'm really sorry I brought up COVID, but oh, sorry. Um, oh boy, this one is weird, admittedly. This one is about uh, basically what this weird sentence says is gray hairs are related to certain embryo cells. Okay. So again, weird ass things, but where to go, where to go, where to go. Blah, 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 good Lord, Jeff. Why did you have to scroll up? Somewhere in here is my confidence intervals. I have lost them. Damn you. Oh, sorry. Could, but I forget how they, they don't put CI, I don't think. Uh, I could do that. Well, okay, let me let this one go. This is not very interesting. This is another COVID one, why not? <laughs> COVID about uh, diabetes, oh boy. Uh, and then the results they show, they take samples, so many, an N, and then down here, 95% confidence in them. So bam. 6, 18 percent, so forth. So we're not gonna dig into the science behind this. I just wanna point out, any statistical analysis done will have to include these confidence intervals because it communicates to me. So this, would you say this interval here is, is, wide, is definitely wider, isn't it? It's 618 up to 725, yes? You with me? No? Whatever this represents, that is a kind of a wide interval. But what if this is amongst people uh, who got who um, got COVID, and the actual number for for uh, everybody is like 500? This would be evidence that whatever this is increases if you get COVID. Maybe, maybe. All right, I'm sorry. You guys are like, stop talking about COVID. Okay. So just at the very least, I want you to understand that all the work we're doing is the exact work that's done to analyze statistics. I say exact, and of course, the formulas get a little bit worse. They're not gonna be exactly that, they get a little worse because they got other variables to worry about, but it's basically this. Okay. All right, so coming back to this sheet. Let's talk about part C. Um, and to do that, we're gonna have to do a little bit of algebra. When I say we, I mean you. So, can anyone remind me this piece? What is it that I keep saying this piece is? I, I gave it a specific name. It's how much we think we're off by. So, it kind of makes sense to call it the error. 
is how much we think we're off by, right? So for example, I mean, if I said, how many people do you expect to come to the party? And you said 40. Do you really mean you know it's going to be exactly 40? No, you're like, ah, it could be 35 to 45. That's a confidence interval. What did you base it on? Your own intuitive sense, correct? So it's not a scientific calculus, uh, confidence interval, but it's still a confidence interval. I think about 35 to 45 people. Do you guys understand? Have you ever said anything like that in your childhood? Yes, you have. So you've created confidence intervals, just not highly analytical ones, but they're still based on your previous experience. So this, we call the error, because it's, it's this, give or take, this. That's how much we think we're off by. Right? Okay, maybe. So, the error is equal to this. Is there equal? Can I write this down? Just Let me just talk about that specific piece. So just like we did up here, if I know the sample size, I can calculate the error. We did that twice, right? What if instead I know what I want the error to be? If I know what I want this to be, let's say I know I want it to be right here, 0.5 inches, within 0.5 inches. That's the key word for error. I want to be off by half an inch. How much were we off by in part B? What was the error in part B? Remember, what part of the form was the error? This part. What, what did that come out to be in part B? 1.111, right? So we were off by over an inch, right? So if I want to be off by just half an inch, wouldn't my sample have to get bigger to be more certain about what we find? Don't I need to take a bigger sample to have a smaller error? So let's see what happens. So let's do this. This setup currently is good if I know this, this, and I know the sample size, I can calculate the error. In this case, I know the error, I want to know what the sample size is. Can somebody help me solve this equation for n? Now, if you look there, you see the answer, but we're going to get there. What are the steps? Say again? Okay. That's a, okay, I could, I could. It gets a little weird. Um, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. In algebra, when you have an equation, like, guys, we're not going to suddenly become an algebra class, but is this equation like a difficult one? Right? What if I do this? Is that now a little worse? Did I make the equation worse? Hell yeah. So what really sucks is when there's something on the bottom, right? When there's a fraction. How do I cancel this fraction? How do I undo this? What is square root of n currently doing? Isn't it dividing? So I'm going to, just like in this equation, couldn't I multiply by 7? Won't that cancel that? Won't there now be not a fraction there, right? So if I multiply both sides by square root of n, doesn't that cancel? Isn't that immediately better? Still sucks, but it's better. Now I got square root of n times e equals z sigma. Is that cool? All right. Now I want to get n by itself. And I've almost got the square root of n by itself. What do I want to get rid of? Now I can do. Oh, yeah, now I want to divide by e. There's nothing wrong with dividing by e there. It just looks a little weird. Man. All right, now somebody else help me out. Sophia's got it going on. I want to see if somebody else. I want n, right? I don't want the square root of n. So what do I do to both sides to kill the square root? What's the opposite of square rooting something? Square. So if I square both sides, I'll get n. So 
So that's where that formula comes from. Now, to be honest, let me show you. I don't know why I wrote it down like that, because that's not really how I normally do it. I normally do this. I normally do z times sigma over the error, and then it's squared. It's just a little bit quicker. They're both the same thing. Okay. Now, I'm a little bit evil on this. Can you guys see what z is going to be? I'm a little bit evil on this. What is z going to be? Is it going to be 1.645, like up here? No, it'll be 1.9. Why? It'll be 1.96. Why? 95%. 95%. I love it. So 1.96. 1.96 times the standard deviation, which is still 4.11. Over the error, which is 0.5. Now, the biggest mistake I see people make is they'll put the error they calculated here. I really want this to make sense. A sample size of 37 led to this error. If you put this number into the equation we got, we'll get 37. We already know that a sample size of 37 leads to this error. I want to know what sample size leads to an error of just half an inch. So I've got to put half an inch in. All right, take a minute. Don't say anything. See if you can calculate that. You should be able to put that whole damn thing in at once if you use parentheses. What do you guys get for this? Anybody got that? Okay. Yeah. Shall you put it in the calculator? Oh, yeah, I did that. Yeah. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if I did that. You said huge. Oh. I was like, this Yeah, that sounds like, uh, Millions? <laughs> By the way, remind me, physically, in this problem, what does that mean? What, what oh, sorry. The, go ahead. What's the dot in the middle? Is that a multiply? That's a time. Sorry. Let me oh, make it. Multiply. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get confused. Let me put a little asterisk like that. This number is the value of n. Physically, what does this number mean in this problem? That's the same size as much. Tell me what exactly 259.57 what? Dolphins. Dolphins. Does this sound good? Do you want to get 0.57 of a dolphin? Or no. 16. You always round that number up because I don't want to go chopping dolphins up. It's probably a bad idea, right? So we round it up to 260. So we only had to do 37 sample size, right? We only had to get 37 dolphins to get an error of 1.3 inches. If I want to get an error of half a freaking inch, I'm going to have to take quite a bigger sample. I really want, if I want my error, how far off I think I am, to get to just half an inch, I'm going to have to take a bigger freaking sample. If I take a big sample, I am more certain about the sample mean I get. So that makes my confidence interval get smaller. It's going to go and be half an inch up and down. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So there are problems in the homework that involve this formula. So now you know that formula. Okay. Um, actually, yeah, let me see. Even if you don't like politics, I'm gonna show you. Blah, blah, 
blah, blah, blah, blah. You don't tell me. No, you don't. Okay. Hold on, guys. I'll let you see what I'm doing. Look, for example, at crap and a half. Get out of here. Oh my god. Okay. Is, this, is this about um, the Donald Trump's 24 felonies or something like that? <laughs> you keep going with that. No, no, no. I'm not going to tell you about that. Hold on, guys. Um, election poll. Not 2022. That's in the past, guys. 2024. Okay, okay. Let's see what we got. A bunch of crap. A bunch of crap. No, come on. Give me, give me some data. Give me some data. Ah, that's where I just was. All right. All of you suck. All of you suck. Let me see. Okay. So these are based on polls about, for example, in the Republican primary. It looks like Trump did this Santas. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't think they tell us. No. Shoot, shoot, shoot. All right, I'll let that go. I'll let that go. I was hoping they would actually show us the, the confidence level, but no. Okay, so. Oh, good, you're right there. Um, the reason I wanted to try to find that really quickly is because what you'll normally see is you'll see somebody say, okay, Trump, 40% uh, or something, uh, DeSantis, 35% or something. I think it's really generous for him. But... And then somewhere they've got to say plus or minus 3% or so. And I, I keep putting this kind of example up on the board. I wanted to find a real life example real quick, but I could um, so we, this is a problem about percentages that what we just did is a problem about sample means. So we've got to construct a formula that works for percentages. So let's start with where we started before. So for means, this is what we did. We started with this formula. I did this up on the board the other day and I said, okay. We normally don't know what that is. So we're going to use the sample mean. That's our best guess. We don't know what the real mean is, so we use a sample mean. Which means we must have taken a sample, so then this has to change. And then this is still Z, and then we go up and, up and down. Like that. So we're going to do the exact same kind of thing. So let me, let me show you this. This is a little bit weird. Can somebody tell me, when I construct a confidence interval for a sample mean, what is it that I'm trying to catch? Mean. The real mean, the population mean, correct? I'm always trying to get an idea where the population mean is, because we don't know what the hell that thing is. And we don't have time to talk to everybody. Um, so let me just introduce a little bit of a weirdness. The real mean, falls in here. Okay. So what does this do? It tries to catch the real mean. Okay. So if I want to do percentages, we'll start again with this. So if I'm doing percentages, I'm going to take a sample. I'm going to have a P and I'm going to have a Q. Yes? Well, let's say P hat, remember P hat and Q hat? Actually, maybe you don't. Maybe I'm talking about that. So, so back in the day, we had a binomial and we had N, P, Q, right? We'd have N and P and Q. We could do the formula for the probability. We could calculate the average. Do you guys remember what the, the formula for the average was in this situation? N times P. And what was the standard deviation? Yes. Okay, cool. So that's the truth for binomial. And binomial is all about percentages. So when I'm talking about percentage of people who are going to vote for Trump, for example, 
either somebody's going to vote for Trump or they're not, correct? So that's two cases. That's a binomial situation. So there's going to be a P and there's going to be a Q. Let me stop for a minute. You guys with me? Okay, so let me get a little more specific. P is the population percentage. Every single time we've had a binomial probability problem, I've told you the percentage of everybody. It's the population percentage. So let me ask you a quick kind of example question um, to get to the next thing. If I had 75 people in a room and 25 of them like pistachios, what percentage of them like pistachios? Pistachios. What percentage of the people in the room like pistachios? How would you calculate that? Say so, How do you get that? What, do you, what did you do? Uh, it's just one third of 75. True, so you did like 25 divided by 75. 11, so that's one third, so that would mean that it's 33.33%. That percentage came from a sample, correct? The symbol we use for this, you're gonna love this. What's the symbol for sample mean? X bar, right? Doesn't they have a little thing on its head? Isn't it wearing this weird flat thing on its head? Yes? Okay, I love it. That's exactly the look I want. I think you gave me this look like, all right. <laughs> right? What does that say? Uh, Which that's part? The, sorry. No, that's the like. Oh, oh pistachio. pistachio. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's much better, Jeff. <laughs> Pistachios. I don't know. It just came to mind. P is the population percentage. P hat. And that is not me making that name up. That is the official name of this. P hat is the sample percentage. So if I say 11% of Americans are left-handed, that's P, Americans, population. If I say 12% of my students are left-handed, that's P hat. That, that's a sample from the whole population. Maybe. So if I say another way, I can say I take 800 Americans and I find that 10% of them are left-handed, that's P hat. That is a sample percentage. Same idea as mu for population mean, X bar for sample mean. P for population percentage, P hat for sample percentage. That's it. So, watch this. To get a percentage, don't I take a sample? If, if I don't know what P is, don't I take a sample to get a feel for what P is? Right? So if I take a sample, I'm going to get a P hat. Okay. What's the formula for the mean? How do I do this then? What's the formula for the mean? So it'll be n times p hat, because I don't know what the hell p is. I'm going to do the next best thing. It's sort of like finding a sample mean. I'm going to find a sample mean with using the p hat. Make sure that's. So mu is equal to np normally, but it's np hat because that's all we got. We got a sample percentage. Plus or minus. Z. Now, what's the standard deviation? Good. In this case, though, it's got to be n p hat. Wow. P hat. So again, I really want this to make sense. When I do this work, can I use mu? No, because the whole point is I don't know what the hell the average is. I have to use the sample mean. When I do this work, can I use p? No, I don't know what the percentage of the population is. I have to use my sample percentage. And again, we're right now 
in the state of deriving the equation. You're never going to have to do this yourself. I'm just showing you where the equation is coming from. We're not there yet. So again, this is trying to capture this, just like this. This is trying to capture the real me. Same thing here. This is trying to capture the real me, NP. <coughs> Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. So now watch, watch, watch. Okay. So mu is NP hat. That's the equation. Sigma is square root of NP hat Q hat. That's the equation. Z just comes to the right. I'm going to go up and down just like I do for any confidence interval. But now I want to, what I really want to do is get a, a confidence interval for the percentage. I just want percentages. I don't want NP. I just want P. I just want the percentage. So what I do is I divide by N. So now I get the P, the population percentage, is caught like this. I have a sample percentage. I'm going to go up and down so many things. So now what I want to do, let's just write this down real quick. All right. And then I can simplify this a little bit better because I've got way too much stuff on the board. I'm going to erase all this stuff and then write this. And then we're going to work one more step. There's a lot going on up here. I understand that. This is all the concept. We're working our way towards the formula. Same way we work towards this guy. Okay, I'm going to erase all this. You guys ready? Oh. Take away Trump and Santis. I'm going to keep this here for a second. So I got P. I capture the population percentage, hopefully, in this interval. So you see how much algebra you guys remember. Am I allowed to cancel those ends? Real quick thing about square roots. What's the square root of nine? Three. 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 Why? Half a nine. Uh, let's look at it this way. You ready? Square roots are like a one half power because what do they do? They they cut something in half multiplicatively. If I said what's half a nine, you should say four point five. If I say what's half a nine multiplicatively, three three. So half a nine is three. You guys with me? On the bottom, I have a full N, don't I? On the top, I got half an N. Right? So I don't know if you guys remember, if I wanted to divide something in a square root divided by something not in a square root, I can't do that. If they're both in a square root, like if I have the square root of 8 divided by the square root of 2, I can do that. If they're the same root, I'm allowed to combine them. Half of 8 divided by half of 2 is half of 4, which is 2. So I need them both in a square root. Can somebody tell me, what is the square root of n squared? You can do it. N. n. Cuts it in half, right? So can't I replace this with? Square root of n squared. Those are the same thing. Now do they both have a square root? Now I can reduce this. How many n's cancel? One. So you have one left on the bottom. So I'm going to write it like this. P hat plus or minus big, oh, get out of here. Plus or minus z, big ass square root. I left my little hats out, sorry. Oh, uh, yeah. P hat. Q hat over n. All right, so everything we did up to this point is derivation. This is the formula we're going to use. So this is how you construct the 40% uh, are going to vote for Trump plus or minus 
This is the p hat. This is the error. How do you make your error go down? You get a larger sample, right? If you make n bigger, doesn't that make this whole thing smaller because you're dividing by a bigger number n? Do we multiply uh, p here? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So let's do this. Um, let's try a concrete example. And then, incredibly enough, I've got a, a handout for this. I just, you know, I, even if you can't follow every single step, I always feel like I want to show you where a formula comes from. Once we get the formula constructed, now what's your job going to be? Plug the right shit in the right place, right? But I never want to start teaching, here's the formula, let's plug stuff in, because that should be the easy step where you just start throwing stuff into the formula. I want to show you where it comes from. So I'm going to erase all this again, and then I'm going to write this down again, and then we're going to try a concrete example. So let's say we sample uh, 812 um, people. find 107 white uh, season 8 of Game of Thrones. Even if you never watched it, who cares? Still, you can do the problem, right? Seems hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> I want to find the 99% confidence interval for the true percentage of people that like season eight. Can anyone tell me everything you know about the sample? They told people, now somebody else tell me anything you know about the sample. There was 812 people in the sample. Nope. That has nothing to do with the sample. I want to create this. Oh. What do we know? There's one more thing we know about the sample. 107 people out of the sample liked it. In fact, I just said exactly the way you would say it. 107 out of 812, yes? Liked the season eight. So can somebody, what's P hat then? What's the percentage from the sample? 107 out of 812. What's the biggest P hat can be? Joseph. Yes. Why did you do this? Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Season eight. Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, like, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. My S's look like fives. I, just, I was trying to be lazy. That was a bad choice. Okay. Wouldn't you say 107 out of 812? So the great thing about that is, is exactly what the math wants you to do. Can somebody do that real quick for me? What What does that come out to be? I would I would say point one two nine. Round up thing is one thirty two. One thirty two? Yeah. One thirty one something? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is beautiful. You kinda you kinda now here's the thing. When you do these problems, I want P hat to be at least three decimal places. So what do you got so far? Standard deviation has to be three places. P hat, Q hat has to be three places at least. Probabilities have to be four places, right? because that's what the z-score tells, tells us. So you could make every damn thing four decimal places and then you're covered, do you understand? In case you're like, I don't wanna remember when it's through. You make everything four, except for z-scores, they can only go two, because the chart only goes to the second place. You guys with me? Okay, okay, maybe. Can anyone tell me what q hat must be? The p 
hat is 0.132. So is it your remaining two that Yes, the remaining. So what's remaining? Let's see, eight makes that nine, six makes that nine, eight makes that 10. So no matter what clothes they're wearing, P and Q have to add the ones. So if they're wearing hats, they have to add the one. If they're wearing socks, they have to add the one. By the way, there is no P sock. That sounds like a terrible thing. <laughs> so, so, you don't want to wear that then. Just like you don't want to wear the P hat. Um, now, what else do we need for the formula? What's N? Well, N we know already. What's N? Uh, A12. A12. And what's the last thing we need for the formula? We got everything we need except one thing. Z score. So can you guys look real quick on the baby chart? I always forget. All right. I just remembered one thing. That's okay. We'll do it here in a minute. Can you guys go ahead and construct the formula? See how far you can get. It's, it works the exact same way as the formulas we were doing for the means. It looks a little different, but it works the exact same way. You just plug stuff in. Let's see what we get. Should we do that error for us? Oh, yeah. Okay. I would highlight. You don't have to. No, it's just okay. But I recommend it, yeah. This in my head, why not, John? That's a lot going on. <laughs> oh, one. Why is it? oh yeah, that should be bigger. All right. So yeah, I'd say it's like. Um, it's around. It's around point oh three. I think. I'm really vague on that one. Too bad. Oh, holy shit. Okay. Did anybody get this piece right there, the error? No, 0.035. Yeah, so you can make it 0.031 if you want to. Oh, okay. This, could, this, this piece has to be at least as many decimal places as this piece. So now you do just like we did before. So the beautiful thing about this, even though it's a different formula, it's a different kind of problem, the, the work is really the same. Now you subtract 0.031 from this, and you add 0.031 to this. 131. What happened? Oh, 0.132, yes? 0.132, I think you put 132. Oh, oh, right. So it's roughly 10% to 16%. You guys see that? So make those percentages. Did you guys get those? Okay. See, I'm good in my head, and I'm not sure if I can always trust that. But I was kind of impressed I got that done. Anyway, sorry, I'll say. Um, so we can say the same thing. We can say the same thing. We are, what? 99% confident that the interval well, no, no. Now I say make these percentages. The interval 10.1% to 16.3% contains 
the true percentage of people who like season A. Okay. Which again, I, I don't know. It sounds maybe about right. Maybe it's a little high. I don't know. So we found 13% in our sample. Confidence interval is a better way to communicate to somebody. Because if I just say it's about 13%, well, how, like, you know, how far off from that do you think it is? So if I say it's about 10 to 16 percent, all right, I can work with that. That communicates more to me about how certain you are. If somebody else came along and said, I think it's about 5 percent to 28 percent, it's like, okay, <laughs> that's a little bit huge. But still, even then, I would know less than a third of people liked it, right? So maybe. And of course, why would that be good to know? Well, if you're planning a sequel and everybody hated the last season of your show, you maybe you should scrap plans for the sequel, right? Really sucks, because I wanted to rewatch it, now I really don't. Um, okay. So again, sorry if you don't watch Game of Thrones. Uh, so let me give you this. I want you to do as much as you can on number one by yourself, and then I'm going to come in and catch up to you. Oh yeah, let me talk about it right now. Sorry, let me interrupt you guys real quick. I always forget to do this. Um, when I when we did confidence intervals for the mean, what had to be true to make sure I can use the z-score chart? What has to be true for me to use the z-score chart? The distribution has to be. What kind of distribution do I have to know I have? Normal. So what's one way to check if it's normal? N greater than 30. Okay, so that one we did was 37. That was bigger than 30. We were allowed to keep going. If N was 11, I couldn't keep going except that problem I did say it was normal. Does this say the problem is normally distributed? Anywhere? No. No, no. shit. For percentages, I can't just say N greater than 30. That's not good enough. So let's talk about why real quick. Um, by the way, to do this problem, you don't have to know what I'm about to say, but except for this piece, right? You don't have a clue what the hell that means at the moment, and that's my fault. So let me back up a second. Let me put this up here. You guys remember this handout? See that one? It's beautiful. Oh, there it is. Remember the handout that had this on it? Maybe. So this was like, this was flipping a coin 14 times, right? So if I flip a coin 14 times, what's the expected number of heads I would get? If you flip a coin 14 times, how many heads do you expect to get? Around seven. seven. So does it, does it make sense that the highest bar is seven? What shape, at the time we did this, I pointed this out, what shape does this have? Normal, it looks really pretty normal, doesn't it? Okay. Why? Isn't there a hard wall at zero? Can you go below zero? You can have less than zero heads when I flip a coin. If, if you do, show, well, maybe don't show me. I don't know what the hell it is. It's going to freak me out. Could you get more than 14 heads if you flip a coin 14 times? Again, if you do, show me. All right. If you flip a coin 14 times, you can only get up to 14 heads. Are you guys with me that there's like walls there? Yeah. Nothing can go past those walls because it wouldn't make any physical sense. What if Go with me now. And I'm sorry, everybody at home, you just you didn't see any of that. There's the picture we're talking about. 
Okay. What if I had a weighted coin? Like somebody took a coin and they messed with it so that it came up heads only 10% of the time. Right? What, how often does it come up tails then? What's Q? 0.9. So somehow they weighted it so it would come up tails more often. Can you guys understand there's a, just sort of like weighting dice so they come up a certain way. You'd want to do that if you're out there gambling or whatever. Doesn't happen often. <laughs> you're not out there in alleys like doing some uh, playing craps. Um, if I do this, and I do, and I flip it 14 times, what's the average number of heads I would expect? What's the formula again? It, uh, P plus or minus. No, 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 not the confidence oh, the, uh, the mean. If I do something 14 times and there's a 10% chance. Yeah, it's N times P. So wouldn't that be 14 times 0.1? Isn't that 1.4? Yes? Okay. So the mean won't be seven anymore. The mean will be 1.4. So the new picture would look like this. There'd be zero, one, two, three, four, five, blah, blah, blah. And the highest bar will be around one. Does that look, does this look normal? Is that normally distributed? Hell no. You guys semi with me? Yeah. Okay, okay. So, if the mean is not big enough, if it isn't far enough away from that wall, it won't have enough room to go up and come back down. It won't have enough room to be normal. Same thing on the other side. It can't be too close to the other side. Or else it wouldn't have room to go up and come back down and be normal. So here's how we capture that. NP has to be at least five. This book might say greater than five, but I always thought it was at least five. And NQ has to also be at least five. Now, if we don't know P and Q, we use the hats. But I really want this to make sense. I have to be at least, if the bar, if the highest bar was at five instead, wouldn't it still have room to go up and come back down and look normal? If the mean is too close to either this wall or that wall, there's no room for it to look normal. It's like starts tall and it goes down. That's not normal. Normal doesn't say, wow. No, normal says go up and come back down, right? I really want this to just kind of make physical sense. So just like you check n greater than 30 for mean, we have to check these for percentages. So if you look back at the, the paper we're working on, that's what I mean right here. So I'm sorry, keep going. catch up to you here because I'm a little evil with the confidence interval, but I'll see if anybody remembers how to do one that's not the baby chart. Seven oh four? Yeah. Okay. Is 
that what you guys got? Anybody else? Yeah. Yeah. What do you get for two half then? Uh, what's my mind? Oh, what is two nine six? Two nine six. I want just one minus this, right? Together, the hatted ones here have to make one. That's kind of silly to ask this because we already know, but what is that? Uh, 652. 652. That's always the bigger number, the total number. What is n times, now this is kind of funny. Let me see if anybody can see what this is going to be. What is n times p half? Uh, 652 times uh, 2704. Yeah, so 652 is n. I'm going to multiply by p half. Does anyone see if I multiply this times this, I should get close to that? Yeah, right? you get uh, 4, four five, nine, four, seven, eight. I love it. And why isn't it exactly this? Because that's rounded, right? We rounded this. Right? So it's a little shortcut. If you've got to calculate NP hat, it's just going to be X. It's just going to be the number of successes. But if you don't see that, just multiply N times P hat. 652 times 0.704 is roughly 459. Is that big enough? Yeah. Because it's at least what? 30. No? Nope. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> Fine. So means N greater than 30. Percentages, np and q bigger than equal to five. Yeah. What's n q hat going to be? Uh, one nineteen. Yeah, six fifty two times point two nine six. So that'll be what you say one nine two nine two roughly one nine two point something I'm sure right. Yeah. And that's at least five. So what does that mean if I do this check and it passes? That means it's normal enough. I don't know. So we did, <laughs> what's, uh, what's N? Uh, and what's Q hat? Uh, 0 0.296. So 652 times 0 0.296. Oh, okay. Yeah. And same with NP, just do that same. Same thing, just okay. with Q instead of P. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So that means it's normal enough, which means I'm allowed to look up the Z score, right? Now, for some reason, I felt like this wasn't enough already. Does anyone remember how to do, I can't, so 96% confident, that sucks. Because it's not one of these little dudes. Yeah? Damn it. So how the hell, so we gotta remember how we used to do it back in the day. So if I wanna be 96% confident, how much is just down here? 0 0.02. 0 0.02, so if I look up 0 0.02 in the area, Shit, I think I get really close. Yeah, here we go. That's the closest right there. 205, yeah. I get a z-score of 205. You guys see that's the closest thing gets a 2% right there? So I got 2.05. So z is 2.05. All right. So now try to construct the formula. And then I'll catch up to you. Try to write it the way you should put it when you draft it there, it's error piece.
get one of the newer calculators if you like because the square root symbol just kind of grows. So you're certain you're getting all the stuff in you're supposed to. If you have one of the older ones where the square root doesn't grow, you just don't close the parentheses until you're done. That's why I put like a parenthesis at the beginning. If you have the newer one, you don't have to put any parentheses because you can see the whole damn thing is in there. So let's see what we get here, I do it. 0.0366. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got 0.037. Now it's got the same number of decimal places. So if I subtract that, so I want to take 0.0704 minus 0.037. So that'll be 0.6. If I add 0.037, I should get 0.741. Yeah, that point just keeps getting worse. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so we'll go ahead and try to write the conclusion. Let's see, we are 96% confident that the interval is 66.7% to 74.1% contains the true percentage. save you from looking at more algebra. I could do something very similar here to solve for n, and I get this. It looks a lot like z squared sigma squared over e squared. It's just got p's and q's in it now, right? Okay, so here's the weird thing. If we haven't taken a sample yet, so like this is a whole different situation here, right? How many people will we need to survey to be within 3% of the true proportion of students who pass statistics the first time around at 99% confidence? Okay. We haven't taken a sample yet, right? P hat is a percentage from a sample. We have no idea what it is. What is your best guess for any percentage you don't know? Like, what's the percentage of uh, women who are in the tech mall right now? What's the percentage of people who are, uh, who identify as female, in the tech mall right now? What's your best guess? 30. Need them. What do you base that on? Uh, my instinct. Instinct, okay. So in general, best guess is 50%. 50-50, uh -oh. right? I don't know. Could be one of the other. I have no idea. If I ask you, what's the percentage of lobsters in the Atlantic Ocean right now that are sitting on a rock? Do we have any idea? Any idea? No, so our best guess would be 50%, I don't know, 50%. That's our best freaking guess when they have no idea. So do we have any idea what percentage of, of students pass statistics the first time around? No. 
Also, this is the sample size I need to get to be within 3%. If I don't know a damn thing, the sample size should get bigger to cover my ass for not knowing stuff. If I assume P hat and Q hat are 50-50, that always makes N the biggest it could be. So mathematically, it makes sense to assume these are 50-50. If you don't know P hat and Q hat, you assume they're 50%. So what do we got? 99% um, confidence. Who remembers what the z-score is for that? 3.545. Cool. And then we're assuming P hat and Q hat are both 5%. 50%, sorry. And we want to be within 3%. 3% is 0.03. Be really careful. You've got to make the percentage into a decimal or else everything's going to freak out. So if I throw stuff in here, 2.575 squared times 0.5 times 0.5 divided by 0.03 squared, now I can figure out how big my sample has to be. Holy shit, is that right, Jeff? That is right. Oh, I see. That's better. Okay. So I get 1841.84, so I'm going to round it up to 1842. I think that's when Columbus did his thing. 1482? Oh, okay. So I knew the numbers there. Well, that makes sense, Jeff. How could he discover America after we'd done a lot of shit here? Okay. So that's 1482. Okay. A little, little history showing off my, my horrible history. Oh, here we go. <laughs> no? I don't know. Okay. 1682? All right, all right, good. Um, if we had done, now here's the part. So if I don't have a clue what P hat and Q hat are, I have to assume they're 50-50. If, has anybody heard of people doing preliminary studies? So one reason they do preliminary studies, they take out like a small sample. They want to get an estimate of what P hat and Q hat are. If they can get an estimate of what those are, they can put those numbers in here instead. So, let me see. Let me show me. We got a little bit of time. Looking at this sample right here, can anyone tell me what P hat is? 31. No, no, no. P hat's got to be less than oh. 1. So it's 31 out of? 42. 42. I love it. 31 divided by 42 is 0.738. Q hat is 0.262. So now when I set up the formula, I don't have to assume they're 50 50. I know that they're 738. And two six two. I'm doing this a little bit quickly, but better. So two point five seven five squared. So that would be I get fourteen twenty four point five. So round that up to fourteen twenty five. So I would need to take four hundred fewer people. If I did a preliminary study first, I'd take 400 fewer people to get within 3%. So you're going to see problems in the homework where they don't tell you what P hat and Q hat are. You're going to have to assume that they're 50-50. That's their best guess. That's what makes the formula work the best. If they tell you what P hat is and Q hat, then you can just throw them in the formula. You don't have to assume anything. Quick question on the homework. Yeah. Um, so for Homework 8.3, which is what we used to do. Yeah. And then for our homework 8.2. Yeah, 8.2 we're going to come back to because I told you. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's going to use a different chart. So that's why I like to do 8.1 and 8.3 because they're both using the z-score chart. 8.2 has an entirely, not entirely, it's got a slightly different chart that we're going to use to find what we're going to call T 
T-scores instead of Z-scores. Okay, I got so, something. A2, so A1 and... So A1, A3, okay. you can do. A2 we haven't talked about yet. So we'll get into that one next time. Right. Oh, wants to return. And I'll take some history classes. Yeah? Oh, yeah. Oh, it is 1492. 1492. I knew there was a four and two. I knew it ended in two. Um, here. Thank you so much. Please don't keep somebody's wallet.